Hello and welcome into BWYellowJackets.com. My name is Luke Schradel. Welcome into OAC Lacrosse here on this wonderful Wednesday night. It's just about 7 p.m. These two teams are ready to get going in a conference battle, the last game of the regular season for both of these teams. The last week in the OAC regular season, getting ready for the playoff. Six teams make it in. And the Jackets are currently undefeated in conference play, 8-0. They sit atop the conference at 12-3 overall. Ohio Northern at third place in the conference. They have three losses, 11 wins, seven wins in conference, one loss in conference currently. And that loss was to John Carroll earlier in March. Tonight is senior day for the Yellow Jackets. They recognize four senior student athletes, John Schulte, Nolan Connolly, Eric Bechtel, and Clay Kolke, the seniors honored today. And as the stadium announces the starters, we'll get you those right away. Down low at attack, Jake Danowski, sophomore attackman, out of Medina High School. Also at attack, number 88, Kyler Byerly, 6'2", 170 pounder out of Pittsburgh. And also down low, Eric Bechtel, an attackman from Westlake. Joe Storner starts in the goal, they just announced that. Number 34, the junior goalkeeper has had a solid season. Third in OAC save percentage so far as the Ohio Northern starters head out to the VW. Down at defense, Clay Kolke starts down there alongside Ethan Rotowski and Neil Randall. VW being coached by Tony Tatro in his first season Nat St. Laurent is the head coach for Ohio Northern starters walk out for BW Demerly will take the first face off and Jonas Aquila and Roscoff will be on the wings got you the other BW starters before we'll get you the Ohio Northern starters now Brian Dalowitz, Alex Reimer, Riley O'Neill, Nate Jablonski, John Lynn, Nate Mitchell, Bradley Griffin, Sebastian McCod, Cole Zafarakis all start for the Polar Bears tonight. Zafarakis, the junior goalkeeper from New York. Demerly. Gets it kicked in front of him. And Calderwood wins the first face off and the first possession for Ohio Northern in this one. Vito controls on the near side 30. 80 second shot clock in college lacrosse. That opens up here in the first possession for the Polar Bears. They bring on their starting midfield unit. O'Neill has it working on Aquila now. Sweeps across, sends it off to a teammate, John Lynn. Here's Jablonski down the right alley. Passes tipped, but handled well. Garonski behind the cage now with Reimer. Polar Bears swing it around back up top. They want to attack the short stick matchups. Quilla close by on defense. Drive up the side by Reimer. Sends a shot wide of the cage. Does not reset the shot clock. 12 seconds on that shot clock. Got to hit the cage or the goalie to reset that shot clock. Trying to drive inside and a kick back out to Lynn. Lynn with two seconds on the shot clock. is going to throw it away. It's a turnover for Ohio Northern on their first possession. Randall with it on the far side. It 
work into offensive territory and hand off to Schulte. Sun's coming out in Berea on this Wednesday night. It's a beautiful one for Senior Day. John Schulte is senior out there. Nanowski with it right to Schulte. Hunter Bame also comes on. And another senior steps out into the field. Nolan Collin Collin <laughs> Collin Connolly steps onto the field. Number 28, Rocky River product. Byerly behind the cage. There's Connolly. Now to Schulte. Left-handed senior rolls back. 25 seconds on the shot clock for the Jackets. Quick pass inside from Byerly is sent away. Mitchell is there. Fight for a ground ball on the far side sideline. A nice pickup from Mitchell. Nate Mitchell, the defender. Brings in an offensive possession. Polar Bears swinging it around on offense. Here's Cranston working on Tubbs inside. A left-handed shot off the pipe. They say he stepped in the crease. It's a turnover. Jackets will head the other way with it. So two possessions, two turnovers for Ohio Northern. Step in the crease there. But it was a nice look at the doorstep. Jackets on the clear again. Successful on the first one. And successful on the second clear of the day. Schulte attacks the middle right away. Right to Byerly. With Bain. Probing back to Bechtel. On the wing with Byerly. Up top, Jake Branton comes on for the first time. Number 55 in white. Now on the far side, four and white, Jake Danowski, freshman of the year in the OAC last season. Two older brothers played in the brown and gold. Here's Branton, lost it. Gets kicked out. Going to go over the midfield line. Kolke can't put it back over. It's picked up by number 41, Sebastian Machad. Sophomore attackman. Really strong player for this Polar Bear roster. Open shot fires. Vito tries to bounce it past Joe Storner. He's looking for that top right corner. Can't find it that time. 10.25 to go on the first quarter clock. O'Neill working on Tubbs. Drives to his left hand. A pass inside. A shot and a nice save inside from Storner. The Jackets want to go quick in transition, but can't connect the pass to Tubbs. Ohio Northern will go back the other way. With a full shot clock. Shot came on the inside from Achad. Nice save. Sweeping play by the goalkeeper, Storner. O'Neill had it stripped away. Kolke takes it away from him, and Roscoff picks up the cause turnover. Storner controls right back with Kolke here on the near side. Jackets were off sides. They're going to call that right away. A little miscommunication in the sub game there. O'Neill took a hard hit and another one from Kolke on the sideline. He stepped out, and it's going to be Jackets' ball. Rutowski with it, junior captain.
Beckett's are going to sub on their offensive midfielders now. As Aquila cuts to the cage real quick. Try to catch it with the one hand. Couldn't bring it in. Long stick the other way. A couple passes inside, but Rutowski knocks it away. A nice play on the inside on the break. The defender slows things down. Looked to be a dangerous break there from the Polar Bears, and it's shut down by the Jackets in transition. They have the third best defense in the OAC, around, allowing around six goals per game. Ohio Northern with the second best defense, around 5.8 per game scored on them. Their most, in, most impressive win came against Mountain Union, where they beat them 11-2 at the start of OAC play. And their one OAC blemish was the loss to John Carroll, 14-6 at Don Shula Stadium. Polar Bears swing it around. Get it to Ferguson. Ferguson passes it off and had a shot blocked by Bartos on the inside. And then a behind the back shot quick for McClure. The junior on a matter sends it wide right, but Bartos is down. He took a shot. Well, you never know, you might have saved the goal Laying his body on the line there. Still scoreless here in Berea. If you're just joining us, 739 remaining in the first quarter. A couple of block shots there. A couple of turnovers. Not too many shots on goal. Jackets have not taken a shot yet. Ohio Northern has six shots, and one has landed on goal. 7-1 to one in the ground ball game, though. Early on for the Polar Bears, dominating in that portion of the game. A lot of pickups at the midfield so far on, on some clears. Jackets failed an early clear. But otherwise, scoreless. Clear up top. Right to Ferguson. Back to McClure. McClure snags it with one hand. Polar Bears swing it around. Behind the cage now. One on one. Rutowski going to get a screen. Reimer with it. Throws it back behind the cage again with Garonsky. Garonsky tries to drive inside, but Storner sends it away. Gets plopped back outside behind the cage in a leaping play. An incredible effort right there from Reiner to get the possession back. He's going to go right at him. Right-handed shot scores. Ohio Northern opens up the scoring. A great effort from Reiner to jump and get the possession, and then he scores right away off it. Got to be conditioned to make that type of play. And Ohio Northern with a loud start here. Emily back out to do some face-off work. Going against Calderwood. Freshman against sophomore. Demerly picks it up in front. And he's 50% on the day. Lost the first one. Won that one. Jackets trying to get a shot here. They haven't registered one yet in the first quarter. Danowski probing with the left hand. Swings it behind the cage. Bechtel, another senior on senior day. And throws a pass onto the other end. It's a turnover for Bechtel. Karonsky here on the near side swings it to O'Neill. Offensive midfielders all on for Ohio Northern. Tried to test Tubbs there, but thought. Otherwise, now they swing it over to Riley O'Neill, the junior. Here's Lynn working on Aquila, the preseason All-American honorable mention. Shot deflected by Storner. Pops right back out to the Polar Bears. Lynn has it. Step back, fire. And another deflection. It's going to go down as two saves for Storner. And an illegal screen's called. 
So two deflections and an illegal screen on that possession for the Polar Bears and a possession coming for the Yellow Jackets. 1-0, 5-16 remaining in the first. Final regular season OAC matchup. Randall with it. Sends it up to Tubbs, and he's up the sideline. Has it in one hand, and then a timeout comes in from the sideline. Tatro, Tony Tatro wants to talk things over with his roster here at the top of the first quarter. 4.58 remaining in, in this first quarter. Scores 1-0. We'll be right back after a short, short break. Offensive possession out of a timeout for BW. 4.58 on the first quarter clock. If you're just joining us, Luke Schradel here for BWYellowJackets.com. Glad to be joining you on this Wednesday evening. Temperatures have cooled down here in Berea, about 40 degrees outside. I tell you, it feels a little bit colder than that. Byerly on the wing here. Draws the short stick matchup. Leads the OAC in points, and he leads the OAC in shots as well. Sends a shot wide with the left hand. Seventy points for Kyler Byerly in his junior campaign. Looking to add another on this possession, one on one, isolated. Gonna get a screen from Bain. Right to Bame, and he has a short stick, wants to attack that. Screen for Nanowski, a shot fires wide of the cage. Nothing on goal yet for the Yellow Jackets, but two shots now in this first quarter. They went shotless for 10 minutes. Late shot clock here, two seconds left on it. Nowski fires a shot, it's deflected out of bounds by Ohio Northern, but a shot clock violation in play there. Polar Bears clear it up the far side. Ferguson with it, gets it off to a teammate. A couple of new faces come on. Gosnell in for the Polar Bears. Clear out there. He has it and hands it off to Gosnell. Jackets drop into his zone here. McClure with it, tries a pass inside and it's deflected. Jackets fight for the ground ball. White jerseys all over it. Blows out the back with it. Gets it to Storner. Adam Blows here on the near side. Up to Neil Randall. Running into a bunch of polar bears and lost it, but it kicked right back out. Jackets on the clear on the sideline, and Aquila tried to throw it off 
of McClure, but was unsuccessful. Here come the Polar Bears the other way. Trying to go quick in transition. Garonski back to Ferguson. O'Neill to Lynn. And Jablonski steps on the freshman. O'Neill with an alley dodge here. Tries to pass inside, a shot and a score on the doorstep. Coming from Alex Reimer, a nice pass inside from O'Neill. Nets a goal for the Polar Bears, the second of the game. So a fast start for the Polar Bears. 2-0 in this first quarter, 2-12 remaining in the quarter. Demerly back out for the Yellow Jackets. Calderwood in there. Excuse me, that's Ditus who lost it to Demerly, and Byerly has it now. John Schulte on for some offensive work alongside Branton. Give and go action over to Byerly now. Screen. Thought about a pass inside but takes the isolation here with the short stick. Two short sticks out. Playing in the two-man game, Branton lost it. Polar Bears all over the ground ball. And a hard hit coming in from Ferguson. Michael able to get away from that hit. And the Polar Bears still have possession. Got to get it over here in 10 seconds, though. Get it over with three seconds to spare. Falsone off to Reiner. Four second differential between shot clock and game clock. This is going to be the last possession here of this first quarter as McClure holds it for a couple more seconds. He's got Tubbs isolated on that far side, 30. Lots of space in the alley. Defense calling things out, and Tubbs takes it away. He's on the ground, and he picks it up. Dodging and weaving, lost it. It's on the turf, picked it up again. And Tubbs with some nice defensive work gets out of there and gets the Jackets out of this first quarter. And that's where things are going to end here with Aquila. 2-0 to zero in the first quarter. Ohio Northern leads it here on the, on the road. Taking a look at the statistical side of that first quarter, the Jackets really didn't have a lot of offense there in that first quarter. Only took three shots. Struggled in the ground ball game. That's where you're picking up those extra possessions. The Polar Bears picked up four more ground balls and that, that caused them to have four more shots on goal and they've netted two of them here so far today. We'll be right back with some second quarter coverage.
Welcome back inside Trestle Field, George Finney Stadium for the second quarter coverage of OAC men's lacrosse, the final regular season matchup for the Yellow Jackets. They're taking on the Ohio Northern Polar Bears here tonight. Collarwood picks it up on the opening faceoff of the second quarter against Demerly. And Ohio Northern going to have another possession. Even in the faceoff so far, 2-2. Two to two. Pass inside, deflected by Storner. Trying to get something going on the doorstep. Handel trying to take it away. Jackets had four cause turnovers in that quarter. Reiner against Tubbs here on the near side. 58 seconds left on the shot clock. Lots of time to work with. Calls for a screen from Lynn. Two-man game between these two short sticks. Lynn on the drive, tries a left-handed shot, not the greatest angle. Heads out of bounds, and Randall couldn't get there. They say it's Polar Bear Ball on that sideline. O'Neill with it up top. Swings it over to Reimer. Reimer working against Tubbs. Now to Lynn. Jablonski tries the shot. Wide of the cage. Doesn't fall on goal there. 11 seconds left on the shot clock. Everybody took a peek at that one down there. Goronsky's going to go hard at it here. Takes a left-handed shot. Can't score it. Storner's there in front of it. Another save for the junior goalkeeper. His third of the day. Turnover in front of Cage. Picked up by Storner. And off to Aquila. Five seconds left to clear it. And Aquila does so. He's right down the middle with some speed and couple of polar bear defenders fall over. Nanowski with it now, trying to split the double team, but lost it. Polar bears take it away. Lynn picks up the ground ball. Four on three break here. Right back to Lynn. Lynn takes a shot. Too high. Storner's faced 14 shots today. 60% save percentage tonight. Zafiraskis has not seen a shot tonight on cage. Garonski working the two-man game with Reimer. Kolke defending close on him. Tried to back him down. A little bit of post play. There doesn't net a goal for Garonski. Ferguson has it now. Behind the cage, a drive with the right hand. Kicks it up top with Reiner. Reimer... Scored earlier with 6.45 remaining. Actually, he scored two goals tonight. Pass inside. Deflected by Storner. Barely gets to the Ferguson shot, but that's going to go down as a nice save. He's feeling it right now. But the Jackets get it up and over. Firely with it. 10.49 to play in this second quarter. Jackets yet to register a 
Shot on goal. Trying to get one here. Desperately need some offense. A lot of time wasted off the shot clock there in the sub game. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Byerly with it. Trying to attack the middle. Right back out to Nanowski. Screen now. Sweeping with the left hand. Inside. Ferguson. Shot. Too high. Out of bounds. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Ten minutes to play in the half. Byerly with it. Inside roll. Shot. Score it. Byerly opens up the Yellow Jacket. Scoring now with 9.54 remaining in the half. A much needed goal. The Jackets score on their first shot on goal. And it comes from their points leader and the OAC points leader, Kyler Byerly. It's the 71st point of the season. It's also second in goals in the OAC. That's his 46th goal this season. Did a lot of work on that offensive possession to make things go. And Demerly back out for another faceoff. Lost it in front. Collarwood picks it up. And a win for Ohio Northern at the faceoff X there. it behind the cage now with Reimer. Jablonski takes the shot wide left of the cage from our angle. Reimer now up top with O'Neill to Jablonski. Behind the cage now, working on Kolke. Shot scores. The Polar Bears had a third goal, this time from Ben Garotsky, senior out of Dublin. against Didis this time and Didis picks up a win lost on the last time he came off the bench this time he picks up a win for himself Polar Bear running away there was Hojacki and they get a timeout in before he stepped out of bounds so only four goals scored through 8.34 here in this second quarter. It's tied in the, in the second quarter scoring. The Jackets hadn't had a shot on goal until they scored at the 9.54 mark if you're just joining us. Timeout here for Ohio Northern. After a face-off win, they've taken 19 shots already in the game. They've generated a lot of offense off of deflections.
Welcome back. Second quarter action. 8.34 to go. Polar Bear ball on that far side. Falzone has it. Kicks it up top. Ferguson with it. Trying to invert. And now the swing. Cranston has it. Up top, McClure. Now to Ferguson. Passes deflected. Picked up by Jonas on the fly. McQuilla down the sideline. Jackets have an offensive possession. Used up a lot of the shot clock on some of these transition looks. See how fast they get into their offense here. Byerly scored the first goal and the only goal. Gets it off to Shoreling. Inside to Schulte, and there's some quick offense. Generated a shot that hits the goalie there. Shot clock reset. Schulte with a nice look, a great pass inside. And those are the looks that you want if you're trying to pressure off the fast break. Byerly finds Bame, and Bame had his shot saved by Zafirakis. Polar Bear ball now on the far side. McClure will pick it up and run with it. Riley O'Neill with it in the middle of the field. Gets it off to McClure. And McClure with some room in front of him. Bennett couldn't handle the pass, and it's a turnover for McClure and the Polar Bears there. Had a great look. Lots of space in transition and a numbers advantage, but they spoil it there with the drop. Bartos lost it. Ground ball on the turf. Picked up by Ohio Northern. Ferguson, excuse me, Falzone picked it up. it off to Caleb Bennett, a freshman out of Newmarket, Maryland. A couple of freshmen getting some playing time. Here's one, Jablotsky with it, number 17. Working on Rutowski. Kick back up top to Lynn. Lynn fires. And does not hit the mark there. Forty-two se seconds remain on the shot clock. Reimer with it. Now to Lynn and off to O'Neill. O'Neill had a nice assist in that first quarter to get the offense going for the Polar Bears. He's working on Bartos now. Swings it off to Jablonski, the freshman. Crafty move inside and scores. But did he step in the crease? Referees concur. It's a goal. dangerous play there, especially when you're diving at the goal mouth. I thought that he was diving towards Storner, but not going to get the call there. Ohio Northern gets the goal. And Jablonski doesn't look 100%. Don't want to speculate or anything, but looked like he got a little bit shaken up there on the play. Dangerous collision there at the goal mouth. But a goal for Ohio Northern and they're fourth here at the 521 mark in the second quarter. Just a bit over five minutes to play here in this first half. Jackets have netted one goal. And
came from Kyler Byerly, number 88. The junior. Zool out to do some face-off work this time. And a push is going to be called. It's going to be VW's way. Tubbs with it. Off to Schulte. And up top with Bain. Bain had a nice shot on goal in the last possession. Off to Byerly, who scored the only goal. Screen from Branton. Byerly working against a short stick. Shot save in front from Zafarakis. Ferguson on the run, turns it over. Danowski picks it up on the run inside. He's going to go at it, but brings it out. Didn't want to go quick, and now turns it over in the far corner. Ferguson clears up into the middle. Jackets. Trying hard there on the ride to cause a turnover on the sideline. Toss back into play, and Randall has it. Jackets good to go for another offensive possession now. Byerly has it on the bench side. Toe drag, switches hands, curls back inside, fires with the right hand, and it goes wide of the cage there for Byerly. Jackets have the backup, though. Here's Jake Donowski. 48 seconds left on the shot clock. Screen from Ferguson. Donowski, one-on-one -on -one against a short stick. Ferguson, shot, score it. Jackets get their second goal of the day. A much needed one from Olin Ferguson as the Polar Bears were starting to run there. But the Jackets slow things down and score one of their own now. for the face-off between Zool and Calderwood. Pick up from Falcone and a win for Ohio Northern there. Falcone running around Zach Zool. Zool trying to get off as a face-off guy and does so there with some great hustle. It's on the defensive midfielder, Jonas Aquila, and the Jackets are set on defense. Garowski on the island, kicks it back out. Jablonski behind the cage at X, kick it back up top with Lynn now. O'Neill now. Back to Lynn. Lynn, a quick stutter, stutter step. Trying to get past Adam Blos. Still has it. And now back to O'Neill. O'Neill fires in an easy save. Right into the stick for Joe Storner. Stick side high. And Joe Storner is going to be there all day. Adam Blos clears successfully for the Yellow Jackets and another offensive possession here at the end of the first half. 
125 to go. 56 seconds left on that shot clock. Here's Hunter Bain. Sweeping the middle. Inside. Shot bounces off Zafirakis. And the Polar Bears try to go the other way with a quick pass. But it's not handled well. Ground ball out to be had here on the near side. All sorts of collisions. But Schulte picks up the ground ball and the Jackets have it. Short time here in the second quarter. 43 seconds to play. Jackets with two seconds to get it over, and they do. Bame on the sideline. Broke the stick of the defender. Timeout, Yellow Jackets. 26 seconds left. Shot clock's going to be not important here. It's going to be off. And the Jackets will have 26 seconds left here on offense to try to cut the lead to just one point before the first half break. seconds left. Byerly with it. Driving. Working one-on-one -on -one isolated there on the far side. Fell over. Still has it. Opportunity to get a shot off here. Schulte couldn't handle it. Nine seconds left. Danowski inside. Shoreling. Score it. And an and one. The Jackets cut the lead to just one with a score from the freshman Jake Shoreling. Count the goal. And one. But just a flag. Not a point. <laughs> and the Jackets will have that flag waved off. But it was a nice play there by Shoreling, the freshman, in front of the cage. A much-needed goal and a momentum booster for the Jackets into the half break. They're actually not going to wave off that foul. Excuse me there. They're going to call it and give it to Nate Mitchell, a junior defender out of Columbus. He's going to take a knee there for the technical. See what it's called here officially in a second for you, but face off before the end of the half. Randall picks up the final ground ball of the half, and the Jackets end off the half on a good note with a face off win. So the score at the end of the first half, 4-3. to three, And a goal scored by Schurling at the end of the half. And the penalty now final on Nate Mitchell, a slashing penalty. And with Randall picking up that ground ball there at the end of play there in the first half, it means the Jackets are going to have an offensive possession in the ball without a faceoff at the top of the second half. We'll see you there.
everyone. Welcome back into live streaming coverage on BWYellowJackets.com. We see men's lacrosse here in the second half of play. The Jackets are down 3-4 to four to the Ohio Northern Polar Bears in the final OAC contest of the regular season. There is a slashing penalty called on Nate Mitchell. He's in the box, and the Jackets picked up the ball right off the faceoff at the end of the first half, so that means they have possession here. And Aquila will bring it right up the middle. A nice hole there. Gets across the midfield line. He'll stay on for some offense as well. Jackets swinging around. Byerly has a goal on this one. Leads the OAC in points at the top of today's contest. Jackets swinging around on the man up. Branton fires a shot wide of the cage. Janowski with it. Off to Byerly. Inside looking for Bame, and Bame couldn't handle it. Got tossed aside. He's back up now, though. Jackets still have it. 24 seconds left on the shot clock. Branton down the alley. Off to Schulte. Schulte with a screen from Branton. Here's Aquila. With some speed, the inside. Kicks it back out to Branton. Three seconds left on the shot clock. And Branton did not know that. O'Neill on the sideline. Polar Bears clear it. O'Neill down the alley inside. Had an open man. Maybe not time to turn around and score that, but a turnover nonetheless. Goes out of bounds, and the Jackets there to claim it. Neil Randall had it. Sent as a Storner right up to Declan Tubbs. Flying past the midfield line. has it up top picks up a screen from Tubbs switches on a short stick fires a left handed shot too high above the top bar 41 seconds remain on the shot clock 12.33 here in this third quarter Byerly another shot score it 3-4 to four, turns into 4 all Kyler, Kyler Byerly Adds on another one. It's assisted by Jake Danowski. Face-off violation by Demerly there. Possession over to the Polar Bears. Another win for Luke Didis, freshman face-off man. It's handled on the sideline and a turnover from the Polar Bears. Sebastian Machad lost it there on the far sideline. The back of the cage. Tubbs successfully clears over the midline. Tight ropes the sideline, gets it off to a teammate. Jonas Aquila. Aquila. 
Aquila trying to go quick. Score it. Jonas Aquila. All speed there from number two. Jackets lead it now, five to four. Guy who's known for his defensive prowess. Turns his speed into some offensive game. Zach Zuhl comes out for a faceoff against Chad Calderwood. It's a good faceoff battle there, if I've ever seen one. Still battling for it. Picked up finally by the Polar Bears on the far side. to Jablowski. Blonsky, excuse me. He has it. A freshman. Kicks it to O'Neal. O'Neal, Lynn, and Jablonski, the first team midfield on for Ohio Northern. O'Neal working on Kujowski. Looking for some open space. Some ball movement here. Reimer, one on one against Randall. Steps across GLE and kicks it off to a teammate in O'Neill. O'Neill inside to Jablonski. Had it taken away by Ratowski. Nice spin move there from Ratowski. And the junior captain picks up a possession for the Jackets, but they lose it out of bounds there. Top with Lynn. Five four the score if you're just joining us. Nine forty four to play in this third quarter. It's been a good game so far, no doubt. The last OEC regular season contest for both of these teams. A lot on the line. Jackets win. They will have the outright number one seed. As Blos takes it away. A nice call over from 42 and white. And Adam Blos has it now here on the near side. Quick pass up to Kujowski. Jackets in transition. Four on three break. Pass to Shorelink. Freshman of freshman. And he decides not to go aggressively there with the break. A slowed approach here. In the half field set for the Jackets. John Schulte, the senior captain, on for some work. Gets it off to Shoreling. Up top with Jacob Branton. Some fancy feet from Branton. Back to Shoreling. Here's Bame on the redirect. Lost it. Stripped away. Ben Wilson with the cause turnover. And a couple of hard hits from the jacket attack being on the sideline. And Branton stares him down. He sent him out of bounds. Caused the turnover. A combination of him and Byerly. And Ferguson fell over with it. And lost it. Flags fly. The crowd wanted it. But Ferguson is going to get off here without a penalty. Still a one goal lead for BW. Polar Bears on offense now. Duronsky to O'Neill.
Polar Bears have the Jackets hung up with an extra man for about a second and can't take advantage there after Karonski loses the handle. Top with Lynn. Now O'Neill shot inside, saved by Storner down low. Saw it all the way, and Roscoff clears up. Bobbing and weaving there. Nice play from Roscoff. Gets it off to Aquila, who just scored. Wants to go for another time. Has a matchup against an offensive midfielder. See if he tests him here. Not this time. He'll head off to the sideline. After a long defensive possession, Jackets make a stop with a save from Storner there. Now they're on offense. Branton up top. Shimmy and a score. Jake Branton. How about that move? Jackets up top by two. 6-4 now the score. 6-19 remaining in the game is where that one was scored. And Branton, his first goal of the game, unassisted there. Jackets on a little bit of a run of things. That's their fifth goal in a row. was 4-1 at one point in this one. Now it's 6-4. A little bit of a shuffle of the scoreboard. It's always a game of runs here. And a pick up by Falcone. He's on the run. Gets it off to Garonsky. Polar Bears trying to cut into a deficit now. And their largest of the day so far. Biggest lead for the Jackets. Now sits at two goals, and that's where we're currently sitting at. Cranston. Up top, Ferguson. Now McClure. Behind the cage, Garonsky. Working on Randall, a jump sock. Out of bounds. Storner couldn't get there for the backup. But I thought he got there. Has to hustle back into the cage. Reimer tried to go quick with the shot, but can't finish. Storner hobbled back into the cage. Looks like he's a bit banged up. But saves it anyway. Storner with some extra effort and uses the body on that save. He's giving it his all here for the Yellow Jackets tonight. He's seen a lot of shots. He's done a great job handling them. Jackets with another clear and another defensive stop on this run. Here's Tubbs, wants to go right away. Thought he got hit in the helmet there. No flag out. Rest have been letting him play tonight for the most part. And I have to say personally that I've loved the way they've been calling the game tonight. Hasn't been too many stoppages. And not, not too many silly plays tonight from either team. This is an important game. And if VW wins this one, I said that they'll have the number one seed in the OAC and home field advantage for the OAC playoffs. And especially at this Division Three level, if you're playing at your own facilities, I mean, you can't tell how much of an advantage that is. You have to go on a three-hour bus ride if you're Ohio Northern to come play here again. Here's Schulte. If Ohio Northern was to win this game, there would be a three-way tie for first place in the OEC, given that John Carroll is going to win tonight. Pass is stolen away from Branton. And, a, and now I say that, there's a silly play there from Branton, and a turnover turns into a score for the Polar Bears. Skaronski nets one on the fast break. Branton got caught up in after, after the play, he sent Polar Bear to the ground. Wilson sent to the turf by Branton, and I'm pretty sure they're going to get him for some unnecessary roughness type penalty there. The score is going to count for the Polar Bears. They'll cut into the deficit there. 
score from Goronsky stops a five goal BW run in a much needed momentum swinger for the Polar Bears. And now we have a game, folks. <laughs> it's back and forth. This has been a great regular season ending if you're an OAC lacrosse fan. to do some face-off work. The long stick comes up from his close defense spot to work against Calderwood, but Calderwood got the best of him there. Nice hit by Aquila, draws the ball loose. Calderwood tried to get it away, but Randall sent him to the turf, and Calderwood turned it over. So some nice play on the wing, and combined with Randall on the face-off, that was exactly what the Jackets wanted there. They wanted to muck that up, and worked perfectly. Aquila on the run. Pass guys on the corner of the 100-yard dash there. <laughs> two, excuse me, 200 meter as he just goes around the corner. Aquila had a great goal early in the third quarter where he just sped past his defender. That gave the Jackets a lead 5-4. Ohio Northern just added a goal here. Now we're at 6-5. Jackets possession, Firely on the far side. Head up looking for a teammate. Wants to create here, Byerly. Leads the OEC in points. He has 25 assists on the season. Bame at the 36-yard line. Gets it off to Schulte. Two minutes, 35 seconds to play. A left-handed dodge from Schulte. Draw loose. Polar Bears cause a turnover. But they lose it. Zafranakis couldn't handle the backward pass. Mitchell threw it backwards and it got a little bit dangerous. Byerly here on the wing. Swim and a roll back. Almost sent the defender to the ground, but now sends it to Schulte. Schulte, left-handed shot, saved down low. Was looking for the bottom left corner, couldn't find it. Zafrakis is there. Polar Bears in transition. Three on three here, and they're going to hold it. Under two minutes to play in the quarter. O'Neill off to Lynn. Lynn trying to get downhill there. Not too much space to work with. Up to Jablonski. Back to Lynn. Down low with Goronsky. Working on Kolke. Wide of the cage that shot goes from Goronsky. He's been working from the post there. He scored a couple tonight. That's his spot. Scored the last one. Has two goals on six shots tonight. O'Neal isolated against Tubbs there on the far side. It's past him. Throws a pass inside. And Goronsky sends it behind the cage. Randall trying to get fancy over there on the sideline. Couldn't do so. Stays with O'Neal and the Polar Bears. He's trying to get in the post there. Back out to Jablonski. Working on the long stick midfielder. Richie Roscoff. O'Neal. Spins, pass, inside, shot wide. Still polar bear possession. Two seconds on the shot clock. They're going to have to toss this one off into the corner. Right to the dumpster. That almost could have been <laughs> considered delay a game. I, I don't. That's not what I was looking for him to do there. Usually you just toss it off into the corner. He sent that one behind the back into the stands. But Tubbs is in the middle. Lost it. 
Polar Bears get it right back. Shoreline coming, poked it out, but did he step off sides? No call came in. Garonski has it. Double team coming from Rotowski. Was it net? The turnover. Ferguson heads on. Ferguson, McClure, and Cranston come on. McClure from Cleveland. And that's the end of the third quarter here in Berea. Score is 6-5. to five. Jackets lead it by one after a 5-0 to zero run there from the end of the second quarter up until midway of the third quarter where Ohio Northern ended that run. But it's been a great one so far if you've been alongside us. Jackets in their last one took down John Carroll. It was a big win for them. 9-8 to eight was the final score of that one. The Knights Yellow Jacket game is being brought to you by BSN Sports and Nike, the official apparel and uniform provider for Yellow Jacket Athletics. Also, Cleveland Clinic Sports Medicine, proud medical provider for BW Athletics and its student athletes. Also, Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products, a global recycling company. Time out here for the top of the fourth quarter here. Take a look at some stats from individuals. Jackets have four individuals with one goal. Branton, Ferguson, Shorling, and Aquila all have netted one in this one so far. Byerly, the lone jacket with two goals. He leads the game in goals alongside Reimer and Garonski, who both posted two for the Polar Bears. Calderwood comes out of the box for the Polar Bears to do the faceoff work. And Demerly will come on this time for the Yellow Jackets. Big fourth quarter here for OAC playoff seeding. Jackets can claim the number one seed tonight outright if they win. Ohio Northern, if they win, will claim a piece of the OAC regular season throne. Never really lost it in front. Calderwood has it. Break four on three. Shot wide of the cage. A really nice look in front for McCod, and he can't finish. Hasn't been able to score tonight. He's been a spark for this Ohio Northern roster. Leads them in goals with 26 coming into this one. And he just has not had a great night. O'Neill working on Aquila. Try to get it off to Reimer, but he couldn't handle it. And Reimer sends it out of bounds, and it costs turnover from Neil Randall. And I know that Neil is close to that cause turnovers record. Not sure where he stands at now. He's, yeah, he's three cause turnovers away coming into this one. I'm not sure if he might have broke it the other game or not, but he's certainly had a historic career here at Baldwin Wall so far, turning the ball over from the other team, cause turnovers. And he's, he's been one of the best defenders in the OAC. He was first team all OAC last season, and that was an incredible play there from him. Shoreling off to Bain. Up top with Schulte. About a minute 30 into this fourth quarter. Scoreless in this one so far in the quarter. Byerly probing. Pass inside. We're going to see what the call is here. Bain fell into the crease. No goal. Yeah, it wasn't too quick to that one. Had a feeling that Bain dropped into the crease there. Ferguson on the run. Didn't want it all on the inside, though. Back out. McCod. McClure. 
Cranston. Out of Ferguson. Back to Cranston. To McClure. Switches to his left hand. Left to right split. Toss inside to Ferguson. Stolen away. Cost turnover from Rutowski. Jackets have been all over those cause turnovers. Let's get you an update on, on the number of cause turnovers. At the, not, yep, nine cause turnovers tonight. Add that one on. We're at ten. And the Jackets have been causing turnovers. Polar Bears with 18 in the game. And most of those have been caused by some unbelievable Jacket defensive plays. Ferguson up to Leach. Jackets trying to find that groove they had in the third quarter on offense. Renton was able to score in that little bit of, of a run. Going with some speed here. Gets caught up again, and that's got to be a hold. And it gets called there. That's what I thought was going to be called when it, uh, he got pushed over here in the last quarter, got the unnecessary roughness. He was being held, and that time they listened and called the hold there. They just waved it off. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's the fastest game on two feet, and I missed that call. Byerly. Branton. Fire. Wide to the right. Had it down low. Was going to beat Zafirakis if he put it on cage. Shorling, the spin. Off to Leach. The flag comes out. Bench is happy about that one. Byerly on the run inside, poked away. Tried the pass to Nanowski, but couldn't connect with him. Jackets are going to be man up. Both the teams have had one opportunity on the mat up tonight so far. The Jackets, 0 of 1. Ohio Northern, 0 of 1. Offensive package out there for the Jackets. Danowski, Byerly, Shoreling, Branton, Bame, and Ferguson. That's the man up crew for the Yellow Jackets. Branton swings it to Bame. Now to Ferguson. Behind the cage, Nanowski. To Shoreling. Full rotation here. Jackets, everybody getting touches here on this possession. Got to get the offense back locked in. Up top, Branton. Over to Nanowski. Curling. Nice pass from Byerly, found Ferguson, but Ferguson shots goes wide, and possession arrow heads over to the Polar Bears from the sideline referee. Polar Bears trying to clear here up the near sideline. Successfully able to beat down the man up here. So no score with the man advantage for the Yellow Jacket offense. Under 10 minutes to play. O'Neal working on Tubbs, trying to push down into the post. Fires a shot. And a leaping effort. Neil Randall takes away the possession there. Closest to the shot, out of bounds, gets it. And Randall emphasized that in every single way by leaping for that one. Has it now on the near side. A little fake and a nice spin. <laughs> It's a nice work on the clear there. It's a textbook defensive play there from Randall. Gets it off to Shoreling, and the Jackets are in their offensive set. Shoreling hard to the cage. Probing back to Schulte. Under 50 seconds on the shot clock. Jackets 
Beckett's their substitutions on. Branton with it. On the run. Shot inside. Score it. Jake Branton adds on to the Yellow Jacket lead. 7 to 5 now the score. 851 remains. Branton with some nice speed down the alley. Beats his short stick defender. That was Ben Wilson in coverage. Couldn't handle Jake Branton. And he scores, adds on to that yellow jacket lead. 7-5 the score. Under nine minutes to play. Demerly out for some faceoff work against Calderwood. Losier on the near side. Attacking the ground ball. Jackets trying to pick it up. Demerly on the sideline. Knocked out of bounds, and they're gonna say a push without possession in the back. And Emily wins the face off there. Aquila on the run, right past his short stick defender. Trying to get an advantage on offense, but the Jackets are gonna slow it down. 70 seconds remain on that shot clock. Lots of time to burn here. Get a good look that you want late here in this fourth quarter. Pace of play today has been and all over the place. <laughs> As you could expect from the final regular season game here in conference. Quick pass inside, stolen away by Zafranakis. Would have flagged down on the play. Slash one minute going to be called on Ohio Northern. I didn't get, didn't get the number, but I saw that referee call out a slash for one minute. He's going to go confirm it here. Maybe, maybe they changed it, but conference there. One minute penalty to come. And another man up opportunity for the Jackets. They couldn't cash in on their first two opportunities. Just saw one here at the top of the fourth. And also had one at the top of the first half. Here's another one. Can't squander these opportunities up a man. Especially when you're trying to come out with the win in the conference. You need to be efficient in this category to win championships because in big games, sometimes there's big moments where people make some big mistakes and it gets you a man up. You need to cash in. Jack gets with an opportunity here. Under eight minutes to play. Some ball movement. Bain to Nanowski. To Branton, step in, fire, out of bounds. Goes wide of the cage. Jackets are there for the backup. 35 seconds left on the shot clock. About similar left on the penalty. Byerly, up top, Aquila, fires one inside, deflected by Zafranakis. Zafranakis with another save. He's been clutch here in this fourth quarter, not letting things get out of hand. Jackets have been adding on the great looks. But not too big of a lead here in this fourth quarter. A turnover from the Polar Bears. Randall off to Aquila. Aquila driving. Nowski on the doorstep. Save. Zafarakis. Another doorstep stop. And that was looking like an easy goal. What a nice play on the clear. But the Jackets can't corral a ground ball. Barley drew it loose. Need the extra opportunities, especially on that ride. But the Jackets fall short on the man up.
Jablonski. Probing. Turns it over. Some uncaused errors from Ohio Northern adding up here in this fourth quarter. Haven't had too many shots on goal. Jackets had zero up until around five minutes left in the second quarter. And Ohio Northern had quite a few at that time, and now they are tied up here at 13 shots on goal apiece. And great goalkeeping from Joe Storner. He's kept the Jackets in the lead. Shot saved again by Zafirakis. Polar Bears in transition with Lynn. On the doorstep, shot and a score. Polar Bears within one. Score comes from Aiden Dempsey, sophomore out of Fort Wayne. Excuse me, Silver Spring, Maryland. Came in off the bench. Came in for Sebastian Machad, the leading goal scorer, and he comes in and scores a goal here, a big one for the Polar Bears. Jackets win possession. Under five minutes to play. It's a one-point lead for them. Schulte. Bain. Down the left-handed alley. Lost it. Collision and picked up again. Bame lost it. Still out there to be had. The goalie picks it up. So a turnover from Bame there. Jackets lose possession. And Zafirakis has been great in cage. Roscoff on the sideline poked it free. And they're going to give the Jackets the possession. Nice play on the sideline from the junior defender. Out of nearby Strongsville High School. Jackets trying to get things going in transition. Nanowski with it. Off to Ratowski. Excuse me, Randall fires a shot and scores it. Book it for the Jackets, a two-point lead. Neil Randall. How about that bouncer? That's some high heat. Hasn't taken a whole lot of shots this year. But usually when he does, he scores them. It's a talent there, Neil Randall, at the fence. Something that's got to be on the scouting board every time you face the Jackets. This guy has had a great game tonight and is going to set the cause turnovers record for the program. And when you're up there with a couple of All-Americans, it's a really special honor for him and really special honor for the program as well. Byerly with it here on the near side. Try to increase the lead. Runs past the double team. Pass inside. Kicked out. Ferguson fires a shot wide of the cage, and a flag's going to be down a hard hit. Byerly was hit hard. I didn't really see it too well. But a flag's down. It's going to go on the Polar Bears. Another man up opportunity for the Yellow Jackets. Up two with three minutes, three seconds remaining.
Jack hits a man up here. Branton to Ferguson. Behind the cage to Nanowski, another assist for him there. He found Randall and a long stick who just scored to make it 8-6. And that's where we sit at right now. And a man up opportunity. Branton inside. Book it. 9-6 now the score. Jackets take a three-goal lead. 2.41 remaining in the game. That's how you cash in on the man up. You get a dunk. And Branton pounds it home with two hands. Rolls the hammer down. Face off between Zool and Didis. Zool's going to win it. He's going to be taken on by all sorts of polar bear defenders, and he's going to lose it out of bounds. Polar bears have possession. Two minutes, 30 seconds to play. Got to find a way back into the game here on offense if you're on you, and that comes from quick scoring. Some cuts to the net. Too much movement on offense quite yet. You need player movement late in these games. Guys who get open with some crafty sticks and some great hands. That's what's going to bring you back into the game or somebody that can just take over the game dodging. But even at that point, it's going to take too long. So you need those guys inside. Here's Garonski. Wants to work in the post. Get some points back. Jump shot. Too high. Behind the cage. Reimer scored the first two goals. Rolling shot out of bounds. Polar Bears are there for the backup. Moronsky trying the inside again against Kolke. Throws it away. But Jablonski able to corral it at the midfield line. Six on five. Double team comes and the swing to Lynn. Trying to free some space, but the defense is there. The Yellow Jackets are all over the ball. Still out there to be had. Kicked right back to Storner. Quick pass out to Aquila. One minute, ten seconds remain. Jackets with a three-goal lead. Aquila on the run. One minute to play. Timeout, Yellow Jackets. Excuse me, injury on the play. And see that back there. was Dempsey, who had a nice crafty goal, came in off the bench, scored it. Tough to see him get hurt after making a play in the fourth quarter. Never know when that opportunity comes to make a play, and he made the most of it there. Tried to bring the Polar Bears back into this one. That goal came at 5.06. We're at 55 seconds now. The Jackets have a three-goal lead. 80 seconds left to shot clock, and Byerly has the ball. Shot clock is off. All he has to do is run around with this one. And you can crown the Jackets kings of the OAC once again in the OAC regular season. The Jackets are going to claim the title. And the undefeated in conference, 9-0 in conference play. They beat every team at their place or at our place. And Jackets are going to celebrate this one, but not for too long because the playoffs are coming. Still got to win a couple of games to get into the NCAA tournament. And this OAC has been tough. There's been a couple of battles for this Yellow Jacket team along the way. But the journey is over. 
again for the second time. The Jackets are regular, regular season champions. The second time in two years. Back-to-back -back regular season OAC champions. Undefeated in the regular season in conference. 9-0. 9-3 the final score of this one. The Jackets take down Ohio Northern. Let's go over some stats from tonight's game. Branton led the Jackets in goals with three. He added that final man up goal, the dunk. And Byerly was behind with two goals. Ohio Northern posted two two goal scores. Reiner and Goronsky. Hats off to Zafirakis, though. He had a great game. Even though it really doesn't show on the stat sheet, but you never know what the stat sheet's going to look like in terms of goalies unless you go back and watch the game. But um, really, he, he had a great game and, and kept them in it until late where the Jackets were able to prevail. And Storner was overall the better goalkeeper tonight anyway, had 57% save percentage on 35 shots faced. Jackets lost the faceoff battle 10-8, to and that's where the battle was all over the ground balls. Ohio Northern won that battle 31 to 21 and that's something that you look at if there if there are yellow jackets to improve on there would be the ground ball stats but otherwise they played a dominant game they came back from down 4-1 to claim the conference throne and this is going to be a one these players remember for a long time but hopefully it ends in a season with a playoff championship because that's what this team is really hunting for they want that OAC ring on their finger, and they want the trip to the NCAA tournament. So, so long from Berea and George Finney Stadium. It was enjoyable covering the final OAC regular season matchup for you. My name is Luke Tradle, and for everybody at BW Athletics, thank you for joining us for the final OAC regular season contest of the season. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll see you this weekend, excuse me, next week with some OAC playoff action.